and I have to say without any fear of contradiction that the state of the economy in Kenya is on a downward slide. The Kenya shilling is falling at an alarming rate. Uh, the cost of living is a matter that is tragic. And there is, this is one debate that the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, demonstration does not want to address. And they have no answers to it. When they were supposedly elected, uh, they said they, they would not borrow. Uh, that uh, in order to uh, uh, make life better, they are going to subsidize production and not subsidize consumption. But we've seen how that, where that policy is taking us. Uh, we are not any better. And uh, the more you tax people, it has an impact on how well we can produce. And over taxation, is killing industry, is killing farming, and is killing all the sectors of the economy. And there is no answer in sight. I can say, without any fear of contradiction again, that come the next six months, the situation in Kenya is not going to go and it become any better. We who are the counties, uh, the uh, monies that are supposed to come to the counties, they are not coming, and if they come, they don't come on time. My friend uh, Molo Tiende is here. Even uh, other funds, including the uh, CDF, is not being remitted by the national government. So we are in a terrible situation. Now, Jim has articulated it very well. We have one common problem in this country, and that is the problem of the economy. Jim here is an icon, and I want you to note this. We have had two struggles in this country. The first one was for our independence, which we attained. And these grounds here in Meru, we had two major heroes, Musa Mwariyama and Baimungu, who knew what it took to struggle for the independence of this country, who gave up their lives for the struggle of this country. The second liberation, you have a hero here in Jim, standing right here, liberated us from our own local colonialists, and it was a democratic liberation, so that we have democratic space where we can choose our leaders. We are now in what you call the third phase of our liberation, and that is called economic liberation. The greatest freedom of all is when people have money in their pockets, to do unto which they want to do is the greatest liberation. And unfortunately, we are at a stage where we are at the greatest enslavement of economic liberation. We are being enslaved. The president the other day said that his only problem, his only problem is debt. Two days ago, that is the only problem. Makuna kitu kingine, that out of 10 shillings, Seven shillings is going to pay debt. That is our enslavement. We have said for over one year now that this debt, this debt is not legal debt. This debt we should not be paying. This debt is enslaving us and finishing us. It is the reason why we have high taxation. It is the reason why we have the fall of the shilling that Jim was talking about. It is the reason why we are going nowhere economically. I can tell you categorically, hakuna ta hukumbele. There is no light with the method this government is using. As long as they are paying this useless debt, this illegal debt, they are going nowhere. They are not going to solve this problem. In fact, every single day we live is going to get worse. We also know that they have reached the stage where they cannot pay this debt. And very soon, life is going to become unbearable to us. We are not going to take it. Because those who have brought us to this bankruptcy cannot get us out of it. You cannot have a manager in a company who takes you to the brink of bankruptcy. It is not possible. 
It is not possible. So we have given them notice. That after some of you think we are just talking, we have given them notice. We have said that by the end of March, if this does not change, then you shall see action that is synonymous to action that brought the first liberation of Kenya, synonymous to that that brought the second liberation of Kenya, and will bring the third right before your eyes. Now the worst part of it is the, uh, the onslaught on the judiciary. It is unfortunate, it is reckless, uh, and I think the Chief Justice has already said to the President, give me the evidence, because judges are not above the law. Judges can be arrested by, like any other person. There are judges who have been arrested for corruption, and we are not saying there is no corruption in the judiciary. If he had evidence, then this conversation can come to an end by arresting the corrupt magistrates and judges, and we'll say hallelujah, because we also don't support corruption in the judiciary. But he has no powers to threaten the, the judiciary. The Constitution is very clear on how you can deal uh, with uh, judges, with magistrates, where criminality is not involved. If there is a criminal offense, report to the Director of Criminal Investigations or to the Anti-Corruption Commission, it will be dealt with without so many of these speeches. So I say and repeat, give us a break. If you have nothing to talk about, please don't interfere with the, uh, the judiciary. It is a co-equal arm of government. And the judiciary similarly does not interfere with the executive, except when they are called upon to uh, hear and determine cases involving the, the executive. But I think is touching a dangerous place. I can tell you many years ago when we were st um, struggling for the second liberation, we got support from the international community and many stakeholders in Kenya when the government at that time decided to take on the judiciary because they were feeling the judiciary was not friendly uh, to the administration at that time. And I can tell you even this time around, this whole issue and debate about the judiciary is because of the cases which the uh, government has lost in the courts. Uh, the Attorney General's office is there, they can appeal, they can take matters to court, so lamentations is not going to help. I think it's clear that as a country, we are on a trajectory towards doom. And I thought that it is only some of us from Rarieda or the uh, you know, Lake region that are suffering. But having come to Meru, I see it's a common problem. The way the students are stranded in my constituency, because CDF has not been released and bursaries therefore cannot be given, is the way students in Buri constituency are suffering. The way uh, head teachers and principals are stranded on account of not receiving capitation money is the way uh, principals in Buri are suffering. The way students are suffering in, under the junior secondary school because there's no money to construct classrooms and their teachers are still employed uh, as interns is the way they are suffering here. So it is clear that we are on a wrong trajectory. It is clear that a lot of things have to change and only a blind person would deny that. Secondly, it's about the judiciary. I think it's unfortunate that we're in a situation where this regime has muzzled parliament. I am a member of parliament, but I can confirm that it has muzzled parliament. The last institution that is standing is the judiciary. There's a clear and present danger to muzzle the judiciary so that it can sing the tune of this regime. That would be unfortunate. I think William Ruto must realize that court orders must be respected. And if he keeps saying that he will de you know, defy court orders, then we ourselves will go back to the very order that made him the president, the order of the Supreme Court that declared him the winner, and examine if we were to defy that, where will that take us as a country?